everyone and welcome to today's podcast. We are going, we're, my name is Cassandra Vaynerchuk and we're, I'm literally really trying to get right into it because I, I want to try to get all this information in 30 minutes so I don't keep you waiting in the download as I feel like your attention span can be short and it takes for, it took me 20 hours to do a 45 minute download the other day. So we're doing a question and answer series from others who've requested question and answers. So the first question is, how do you complete efficiency while building a community when you're not repurposing, you're just growing, you're just talking, right? You're continuously talking, moving forward, and then you don't repurpose. So you feel like you're always having to produce like new stuff. Well, I mean, I'm doing that right now. So I don't really see the concern here. Um, so I actually am having a concern with the question. Um, I don't really see it as a problem. You know, the, for me, the information comes in, then I execute and I create, and then I just let it flow based on the community. And that's actually how you grow a community. As you listen to your community, instead of what, uh, what you're asking is, how do I stay on my pedestal? How do I stay within my brand? as separation from a community. Well, if that's the case, then you're creating a dictatorship and a pedestal teacher. You, you give the audience what they need, but you also give them what they want. Now, you need to find the balance between those two things, meaning when someone's misbehaving, you don't give them what they want. Although that's what a lot of you do at this time because you want followers and fans. Meaning all of you are based on how people look versus what they're actually saying and then add in the manipulation tactics that these fools are up to, it's really easy to spot. All they're, all you, and this same person in this, this creation asked about creating a monetization. Monetization should be the last thing on your mind. Building the community should be the first thing you think about. Meaning I've been building this community now for six years without receiving one penny. Not one penny from creating this content. Because my purpose is to create an evolution in humanity. I mean, I'm grounded in the actual work versus the money aspect. And you all don't understand that it, you don't get anything unless you pay for it. So take a look at your own cheap ass self. And if you're not willing to pay for it over there, why should someone be able, why should someone be willing to pay for it with you? Because that's the mindset around you folks, especially these entrepreneur scoundrels, is how are you going to pay me, but you never pay them? Understand that when it comes to this kind of work. Um, making the most of what you have, building your brand by reaching more people. Talk to priorities. Hmm. The key is like creating a balance in where your day is taking you and then giving yourself the leeway to be in that creative space. And if you do that, you'll actually create the most of what you have. Um, when it comes to platforms, I have a preference in what I enjoy. So a lot of you want to go to where the attention's at. Um, well, yeah, that's great, but I would prefer to work off TikTok because I'm very good at, at, at using the, the um, what is it called? The, where you like make it a video, make it a film. I enjoy YouTube. I find whatever's the easiest, I love. I don't like LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is for job searching. Searching, searching. I, I, uh, Twitter has a future with me, but at this time, it, it's not something that I spend my time on. Social media uh, with True Socials, my politics, um, Instagram and Facebook are my repurposed sites. I love looking at the different ways that I can take one piece of content and repurpose it to make it look new. And so I really try to focus on that and then slowly add in um, newness to it to keep it like uplifted. And then I like to play with those in my way, meaning I do like to follow what the platform represents, but I've built my own ideas around what the platforms offer. 
and I find it to be unique to me. So it's like, well, yeah, I'm building my brand around myself. So why should I care what you all have as your ideas around what the platform offers? Uh, let's see. How do you support your kids without being overprotective on the internet? Is you monitor what they're watching, you listen to what they're saying, you have real conversations with them, you don't uh, strong arm them, you make them let their own, you make, you allow them to make their own choices and failures, and then you assist them through the failures. Most people don't know how to do that, they're always trying to control the kids. Because they can't control their own lives, so they might as well control their children. And then learning how to accept them in exactly who they are versus who you, in your mind, think that they are. Because a lot of times, people will try to take their children and live vicariously through them. And that's a real problem for a lot of kids, and that's why they have a lot of issues when they get older. Um, this person wanted to know about money, of course, ebooks and information. And I kind of have this thing around ebooks where I think they're really, they're uninformative, they're free, and they're gimmicks. And I don't like ebooks. I don't know how to do one. I think they're a little intimidating. And I think that's why this person doesn't like an ebook. My personal opinion is to write, a, write my book, make it into an ebook. Put it out for free and then have the expectation that you're going to buy the hard copy. I'm expecting you to buy the hard copy. But you can have the information for free until you can afford the hard copy. And that's unique to my platform because you'll never do that. It's called standard of care. And you won't get the information until you pay for it. I don't like the way readers work in the sense of an ebook on a, like a website. I don't like that. I don't like, uh, there's a lot of things I don't like about the ebooks. Plus, I feel like they're complicated to make, but that's just probably because I haven't really done one. They're prob I probably could do one if I've got my, my, I've got ideas around how to create a book too, because um, I've taken classes on this and I need to move on. Um, balance the story of why building a brand and how much to share versus there's never too much to share in my opinion um, except for when you're embarrassing a young person the only thing I would hold back on and a relationship with a, a person like a husband or a wife let's say like someone had diarrhea pants and they're 25 or they're 45 and they're 55 I mean that's too much that's that's too much sharing however Everything else should be uh, available, like in your relationships. But the thing with that is you paint a narrative and because you love this person and you know everyone has, this is where you come in with compassion and empathy. And then you, you create a narrative because you've already, you've already, what is it? Like you've come up to a solution for the problem, then you share. You don't share in the middle of the problem because it escalates the problem. So people right now are sharing inappropriately. They're sharing very fake and weird and strange. Go listen to the Melissa Wood and the Motivan production of how she cares about Gary Vee. That tells you how much she can't stand him. Because if you have to talk that way about someone, then you ain't in no relationship. I mean, get real, folks. Y'all need to start paying attention to this junk. Um, how do you set yourself apart as you be unique yourself, be yourself? I Meaning there's no version of you. You had your parents. You were born in your state. You like your hobbies. There's no one else like you. However, you aren't setting yourself apart is because you're trending. You're trying to be like everybody else. You're trying to fit in. It feels better to go with the grain than it is to go in opposition to it. But if everybody was kind of like in their own little communities living like almost like a uh like in the old days where you were there was a town and there was a town and there was a town and then this person went over to this town and this person went over to this town and then everybody was nice to each other we could actually create this thing of setting yourself apart while living in community however these people have demonized all of these things for self-righteous egotistical narcissistic personality disorder behavior I mean, that right there paints the whole picture. 
How do you focus and formulate in dead zones of like creation of content, creativity? You educate yourself. You educate yourself reading a book, going out and going for a walk, mowing the lawn, doing yard work, sewing a dress, whatever that is to get out of the rut of whatever's holding you back. Um, you go work out. You um, That's how. You take action. You do something because a lot of this work is sitting and yapping. I mean, I could literally, since I've had so much background in education, there's like I'm, I'm constantly creating content to where I actually have to force myself to stop and then to work out. So there's there's the bo there's both sides of it. Too much content flowing in, no such thing. However, you want to be able to formulate it to where your audience is understanding what's going on um, to the point where you are not coming up with a lot, which that does happen to me sometimes. Although all I have, kind of have to do is watch like a two minute video and then I'm like, oh yeah, let's create, let's create, let's create. Inspired by my own ideas, right? You're inspired by others to create your own. But it's all grounded in intention of good-hearted ethics, morals, and values. See, y'all are all trying to create this fake facade of a life that makes no sense. And then when you're when it comes to the money aspect of it, you have to have a job. <laughs> How do you think you're going to learn about existing on the planet if you're 17 years old and you've never had a job? I mean, it baffles me because I got a job at 14. Like, I was literally a month away from turning 15. Not to mention, I did lemonade stands and babysitting when I was, like, 12. So I learned work ethic from a very young age. We did, me and my sister went over to some guy's house, a neighbor's house, my dad's co-worker. We raked his yard. Learning work ethic. We learned work ethic by uh, having to do the dishes, how to fold clothes. All part of existing on the planet. So that's how you formulate in dead zones when you don't have money is you get a job or you have a partner that's willing to assist you and support you, but you better be working your ass off. Meaning you ain't waking up at 11 o'clock in the afternoon and then eating bonbons till one and then making content till three and then you're back on the couch. I mean, you got a goal here and you got to do the work. Sponsorships right now are out of control. I don't even want to talk about that. I think you're over, overpaying capitalism. You're, you're choosing the wrong uh, content creators to educate your audience. It's like a complete catastrophe. Sponsorships are, you know what sponsorships are? Is I've already, I've already shown you what I like and I want you to come to me and say, hey, you want to do a sponsor collab with us? I'd love to. Here's post payment for such a great video. We sold, we increased our business already. It doesn't have, it could be like a, 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 I don't know, whatever fee sounds reasonable, <laughs> but it better be reasonable. And then there's the other kind of sponsors that contact you and say, hey, would you like to try this? Well, I don't use that, but thank you for asking. Or I didn't like that product, but I can take a look at what is positive about it and what's negative about it. And then I'll let you know, and that'll be a consulting gig. And then once you fix the re and repair the thing, then we'll come back and take a look at sponsorship. Meaning that means you're a content creator who's actually up to something for an audience. Meaning some of these people who are supporting a product are literally just walking in the store and showing it on the shelf. Okay, great sponsorship. Well, let me show you how I put it in a cup and mix it around. Oh, that's so delicious. Not one time has Mona Van said anything positive about the product that she's promoting right now. She literally is the example of the content creator on what not to do with sponsorships. There's no fun in it. Everything's about how she looks. It's all about her. You might as well say that you wasted your money on that one. And I can't even think of the name of your product. And I already knew about your product way before then, by the way. Uh, let's see. What should I focus on while building brand? Uh, I would say you should focus on being yourself. Learning how to be yourself in all situations. Um, having fun. 
educating an audience, learning how to have fun, be professional while educating an audience, ethics, morals, and values, so no prostitution. Um, what do you like to do? And those are literally the foundations of any brand. And then the colors and the, 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 the rest all fall into place. Max value while not overextending myself. Um, I don't know. I have a problem with that because I feel like I can do pretty much anything. If you do that, you have to work quickly and you have to think fast. You have to think fast. I Meaning you're probably not going to make it if you think you're overextending yourself. And you're probably very self-centered. Uh, especially if your kids are like six and seven. I mean, I'm sorry, but your kids don't need to be up here behind constantly. You need to teach them how to treat you. Or you've taught them codependent behavior. And so now you need to retrain them not to be codependent. Um, time spent on all platforms as I listen to what my, what, what my, myself is telling me. So sometimes my Instagram account will call me and say, Hey, you haven't posted here in a while. So I'll be like, okay, I'm going to post up here or okay. I'm going to post up here. Facebook. I really, hate. I really honestly have just recently picked up my Instagram and Facebook. I mean, I focus solely on uh, TikTok and YouTube because I find the most value in education. So you might find the most value in fake bullshit. That's probably going to be Instagram for you because it's all model shit. Uh, can, there's all, I have a whole, a whole sequencing around what I, I believe to be each platform's use. And I feel like they all tie in together. And that's that. And that's all the questions. I hope I went through it fast enough to where everybody caught a lot of the information. Um, I want to say thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing, liking, and following. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. My name is Cassandra Vaynerchuk. With a little bit of you, a little bit of me, we're changing the internet whether they like it or not.